weird. All right, so let's get a first look at what it looks like underneath the 300 pound Mazda MX-5. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, episode two on the MX-5. I've got all the bits down here. Um, the new ECU, the new, um, well, it's not new, it's all out of another car, but it's the same same model as mine. So it's um, an ECU, uh, a new key, uh, ignition barrel, the little receiver ring that goes around the key, um, door locks, boot lock, glove box lock, um, there's another little center console lock, and an immobilizer. All of those bits, um, we've got to try and fit all those bits now. I'm only going to I'm not going to worry about the door locks yet, I'm just going to put the ECU, the immobiliser and the ignition barrel, plug that in and then if that starts then we'll go ahead and change all the locks, fingers crossed. <clears throat> Alright, so here's the box of bits, you can see how many different things we got in here, I mean, all locks, there's so many bits, glove box, so we're just going to go and fit some of those and um, see if they work. This whole box of stuff, um, like all the keys and everything, was about I think it was about 145 pounds, which I think is a pretty good deal. Um, if it fixes it, then that's what's that 450 quid in total. Alright, so that's a new ECU in, and the ignition barrel, and the immobiliser. I mean, it's just resting here for now, but hopefully we should get all the lights on the wall, on the dashboard. Oh, they're all there. No immobiliser light either. It should work. <laughs> Getting somewhere. So you heard it, it runs. Oh, I, I can't believe it, to be fair. Only 145 quid and we managed to fix the whole thing. Um, I've just taken the old ignition barrel off um, and I've put the new one on. They're not very easy to get off those because they um, they have these bolts where they, um, the head of the bolt is snapped off when they do them up. But you a bit of perseverance and a punch and you can get them out. Um, with the new ones, I've just angle ground a um if you can see it angle ground a hole into them a hole a line so that I could do them up and undo them with a screwdriver whenever I want but yeah get the steering wheel back on get all of the ECU wiring all tidied up and in there and we should have a running driving car Alright, so that's the ECU bolted back in to where it should be. Also, the biggest bonus I've found in here so far is the garage left a 10mm um, snap-on socket and a little Casio watch. Anyway, this should work now, hopefully. Everything should be back plugged in. And that's the handbrake light there, so if I take the handbrake off, should go out. There you go, look at that.
All right, so we took the car for a test drive. First drive in probably, I think it's about at least a year since it's moved. Um, the front left brake got stuck on pretty much as soon as I get out the gate. Um, that was smoking like hell when I got back. So um, I'm gonna whip off the brakes and see what um, see what they look like. See if I can unseize the caliper. So we've just pushed the piston out, um, cleaned it up a bit. It's moving in and out freely now. Um, I think this will be a bit of a temporary fix, but I think in the long run I'm going to have to change the caliper. But I'm pretty sure it'll get it through an MOT. Just going to change the discs and the pads now. That's that side done. Now we're going to move on to the other side. I probably won't film the other side because it's the same as this side. And then we'll move on to the backs. So I've just wound the caliper back in. There's a, um, if you take this nut off around the back, inside there's a little Allen key. You unwind that and that, then you can push the, um, the piston back into the caliper. I've never really seen that before. I'm normally working on classic cars. I've never really seen anything like that, but uh, yeah, it's pretty clever. Just taken the car for an MOT. Um, just got back. It's failed on um, rusty brake pipes. Apparently, apparently every single one needs changing. Uh, I did look under there, but I couldn't. I didn't see anything that bad. But we're going to get the car on the lift, and we can have a proper look at it. So let's get a first look at what it looks like underneath a 300 pound Mazda MX-5. We got a little bit of an oil leak here. Don't know where that's coming from. A fair bit of surface rust. Body looks good at the front. Exhaust has got some holes in the cowling. Looks like it's had some work done where they normally rust. Looks like it's been done quite well, which is good. Looks pretty solid under here, actually. Wrist suspension mounting points look a bit. This must be the brake pipes he's talking about. I mean, yeah, a little, yeah, they're corroded there a little bit, I guess.
Right, so we've just come back from the retest um, on the MOT. Changed these two brake lines here, which you've seen. Um, and um, when I was doing the discs on the other side, I got one of the brake hoses twisted. Um, so I just untwisted that. And it's gone through fine. Um, they did advise uh, changing the wipers, but I just cleaned them, they're fine. They're pretty new anyway, I think. Yeah, apart from that, it's running really well. There's a few little annoying problems, like um, this window doesn't work. Uh, I think the motor's jammed. It, it I don't know, it, get, it moves a little bit, but it doesn't move, go down. Um, I need to change the locks all round on the rest of it. I'm just using two keys at the moment. It's not the end of the world. That, and I've had to put silicon in the at bottom of this glass here because it's leaking. Not a lot, it's only leaking a little bit over this edge, but it's little things. I mean, it's running really well. Um, I forgot to mention when I turned everything on with the computer in it, the um, mileage is 95,000 miles, which is not bad. And cosmetically, the car is pretty much perfect. Um, this wheel arch is absolutely fine, absolutely nothing wrong with it. There's a few, there's a little rust bubble on this one here and a little one down there. But underneath, because um, these cars are quite well known for being very rusty underneath, but um, it's really good under there. Couldn't see any rust anywhere. The um, MOT did say that the subframe front and rear were corroded, but it was just surface rust and I just scraped that back and um, painted it. It looks a lot better now. Um, yeah, so let's do a little um, breakdown of the cost of this car. So the car itself was 300 quid. The, um, the new computer and locks and everything was 146. New discs all round and pads was about 75 I think, which is very cheap for a car like this. Um, and the MOT itself was 42 pounds. Oh, so I've just done the maths. Um, that comes out to £563 for this whole car to get it back on the road and everything, uh, which is an absolute bargain. So now I'm toying. I don't really know what to do with this car now. I mean, I'm, I am driving it every day at the moment, um, but I have got something lined up for it that might be quite interesting. But you'll have to wait and see about that. All right, that's the end of it for this video. Um, not very long series on the MX-5 at the moment, but um, yeah, we bought the car for 300 quid, got it all back on the road, in totaling uh, 563 pounds or something, I think. But I'm driving this every day at the moment, so um, I'll let you. I'll keep you updated if anything happens with it, if it um, goes bang or something. I'm sure it'll be fine. But yeah, I ha might have something lined up for it in the future, which is um, a couple months, which will be quite interesting, depending on how it goes. I'm um, going to use it every day. I could sell it right now. And probably, I don't know, 1500 quid, maybe. Um, so I would make about a thousand pounds on it, but um, I'll, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do with it. You'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you're liking this, please subscribe.